What is up guys, Wolfgang here. So today I want to talk about Armory Crate. Now this application has gotten quite a lot of hate recently, or well, since its inception. Um, I've been using it for about more than a year now with my current desktop computer, and well, I wanted to talk about it. Now real quick, Armory Crate is not sponsoring this video, nor have they sponsored any of the parts of my computer. So, or they haven't really sponsored any video. So these are my thoughts and my thoughts alone. Everything here was purchased with my money and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Now, I don't wanna make this too long of a video. I won't go through all the modules that, that Armory Crate has. However, I did wanna give my quick thoughts on the application and I'll be showing you through a little bit of things. So truth is, as for pros, I haven't had that many issues with it. Uh, a lot of people talk about how it makes your computer slower and so on and so forth, but the truth is, I it, I don't really either, I don't notice it, or it doesn't give me any issues similar to that. Now, Armory Crate is the software used to control your ASUS hardware, so it can be tough stuff, it can be ROG stuff. Um, me personally, for me, it's always been ROG, as I've preferred to buy the top of the line, um, just have, you know, all the power, all the flexibility that I can have, but yeah, it depends on what you're looking for. Now, ROG is a great software, and that is because of the flexibility it gives you. Now, of course, you will get this flexibility with other pieces of software, but what I want to say is that this software is great. Like, there's no negative, or it's not terrible. Let's say it like that instead. Uh, so, as you can see on the middle of the screen right now, I get a couple of quick settings referring to the fan speed, as well as eco mode for the processor. You know, you get power for the processor and temperatures as well. You get RGB options over here, which I've never used in my life because I prefer darkness. Um, you get scenarios which you can make, which I'm not interested in either because they're mostly uh, RGB related. You get a game launcher, which I don't know why none of my games show up, but I wouldn't use it anyways. And uh, yeah, you get a bunch of options here at the bottom as well with which you can monitor the temperature, the usage of the of your components, the fan speeds and voltages and whatnot. You just got a lot of options and it doesn't end there. That is only to control your motherboard per se. If you have other devices, you can also play around with those. So I'm currently going to turn on my, um, my Chakram X. You can see it gives us all the options to customize the hardware in here. So you get things like performance, so the DPIs, as well as polling rate. You get as well li all the lighting options, and you get um, calibration. Oh, here's the liftoff uh, distance. And you get you know the calibration for your mouse pad. I haven't gotten it to work on mine, but uh, depending on your mouse pad, it will or will, not, or will not work. Mine is like a wool mouse pad, so it's kind of a very inconsistent, so I think that's the issue. Um, but yeah, you get a lot of options in here, which I really do like when you're customizing the buttons. So if we go to the uh, analog stick, you can see you get quite a lot of different options that you can set it up to. And, uh, yeah, I honestly really do enjoy the software and I have not had any issues with it. Now, if you go into the motherboard, you do get a couple more options. This is mostly relating to lighting and, um, stuff like that. And since I have all my RGB disabled, well, the addressable RGB headers and RGB headers are basically off because there's nothing connected to them. You do get, uh, you can download an application to play around with audio, which I don't recommend, honestly. And yeah. Now, my favorite part about this software is this little piece over here called Fan Expert. Now, you can download software to play around with your fan curves. You can do it in BIOS as well. But I think this is a great compromise to control all your fans. So in here, you can play around with your processors fan, as well as your chassis fans and AIO pumps. I don't have an AIO, but it's something you have an option for. And you can adjust your curve very easily. It'll show you num more detailed numbers here on the right. And um, you can also adjust the speeds. I believe you call that hysteresis or something like that. But uh, yeah, you can edit that. We can also set up extreme quiet, which I'm not fully certain what it does, but it does make everything quieter, which I should have done for the video because you might have been able to hear my fan, but um, that's fine. 
Now we can also go to the chassis fan, which is one I've played around a lot with. Turning on auto fan stop, see if it makes a difference, but it doesn't seem to as of right now. I am in a closed room, so my PC is slowly heating up more and more. You get a lot of options in this software to control your fans, which I really honestly do um, enjoy as I don't have to go into BIOS and then edit the fan curve and then test it and then go back. You get options to also um, make the chassis fans change depending on several components. So I, if I wanted to, I could make it only my graphics card, but I personally want to keep it for graphics card or CPU, whichever heats up the most. And uh, yeah, you get several options inside of here and you get to edit your fan curve quickly and easily. And this does save, it doesn't get deleted or so on and so forth. So yeah, it works really well. The first time you open Fan Expert, you will have to do the auto tuning up here in the top right. It'll basically uh, play around with your fan, make it go to max, make it go to minimum, um, and play around with the percentages and figure out what your, your fan can do. And then you can set up, or you can use their default template fan curve. So there's silent, standard, turbo, and full speed. Or you can set up your own, save it, and uh, yeah, save it, save it anywhere you want. I have mine saved somewhere. I have forgotten where, but I believe it is this one. And so, um, yeah, this is an amazing little piece of software you can use inside of Armory Crate. Now you also do get a bunch of other stuff here on the left, which I gotta be honest for me is bloatware, but um, I don't really mind it. So there's RSync for your RGB stuff. There's Game Launcher, which or game library, which I don't really use that in here. You also get your scenarios, uh, a couple of tools, which are mostly just software featured, which I've never opened because I know it's just sales stuff, news. And then you go over to settings. Now settings is another great plus of this software where you get all your updates. So this is for your mouse, for your um, motherboard, for your keyboard if you have a Asus any, any Asus products can get updated in here, which I think is pretty great. It's an easy way to get to all of the, all of your updates. Of course, the software does come with a little bit of cons. So for the first part, if you have several different brand RGB stuff, it means it's another piece of software you have to download that has to auto launch to control your device, or at least to enable you to edit settings on your device. So. Yeah, uh, that is a negative for some people, especially if you have like Corsair stuff as well as uh, Razer stuff and ROG. Now that's getting really crazy because yeah, three pieces of software, that's a lot. I've, I've managed to keep all of my stuff mostly in one piece of software, so Armory Crate. I do have, of course, some Elgato stuff, so that means two other applications. The Logitech stuff means another application, but... um. Yeah, I've kept it to as small as possible for me. Honestly, I, I've enjoyed Armory Crate for most of my hardware. Um, but yeah, that is a bit of a negative. And even though the software is a little bit clunky, um, a lot of people don't like it because of the loading times, for example, because it does take a bit to load in. For example, you saw when I clicked into the mouse, which I can actually do right now to make the demonstration. If I go, let me turn on the mouse, that way it recognizes, which is another thing. It does have to be on. I think that's okay. But you see it did do a quick refresh there. Um, if we go back into Fan Expert, well, now it's loading fast because that's the application's been open for a bit. But the first time I tried it, you saw the loading screens. People get really annoyed by that. And, well, I, I understand it. It is a bit annoying. Just another piece of software, so you got to keep that in mind if you have several different brands for your products. Uh, that might be a big issue for you. It might be annoying, depending on your hardware as well. But yeah. And then another issue that Asus has in general has been the recent issues with the X3D CPUs. So this is the AMD stuff that Asus for some time was overfeeding voltage to them and burning some processors. Now that has been fixed now, as far as my understanding goes, and um, they now don't explode. Uh, I currently have a 7900X3D and it has not burnt out. I actually bought it as the issues were, were popping up of the processor. I updated my BIOS real quick and uh, undervolted it a little bit just in case. 
and I haven't had any issues. Um, my processor is still standing. The ASUS stuff does come definitely with a price hike, which is like the, what is it, brand price? I don't remember what it's called exactly. You pay for the logo, um, which is another issue because stuff are more expensive than other brands. So you do have to keep that in mind, but I personally do think it's worth paying for, not only because I like the logo, but as well, their hardware is actually pretty good. So I'm happy to pay for the premium. Now, as a conclusion, I do want to say this software is on the controversial side, but for me, it's just everything I need uh, this software to be. It's better than it was before, has great fan control, and this software has actually allowed me to install a 12 core processor using a low profile cooler by enabling the, uh, let's see, I forgot its name. I enabled the power saving mode over here, or eco mode, and it's it's allowed me to install a 12 core processor using a low profile cooler. So that's pretty good. I mean, you could probably do it in BIOS and not never have to touch the software. I'm able to do it in the software and I'm happy. Um, it enables some pretty easy updates, some flexibility for your hardware. And uh, yeah, there, there are some cons of course, but personally, I think it's worth it. Um, so yeah, I'll be sticking with ASUS for the time being. But uh, thank you very much for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, the sub button, and the notification bell. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.